welcome and welcome back to Live Laugh Birds, where we live and laugh with birds. And today we are going to be reacting to your cages once again, which obviously disturbed the birds a lot for some reason. I know you guys all just love these videos so much and I think it's a great opportunity even if I don't talk about your cage in particular because obviously I can't get to everyone's. I think it's a great opportunity for you to look at other people's setups, see what they can improve and see what good things they have for you to improve your own cage. And everyone who sent in their cage is looking for me to give them advice. All right, so this first cage is for both a cockatiel and a budgie. Now I don't normally recommend housing different species together, budgies and cockatiels have different personalities, but it depends on the individual birds. You can only put two birds in the same cage if they're bonded and if they get along very well. In terms of this cage, I really like love this entire setup. I really, really like that hanging perch in the middle with the multiple branches. Pearl actually has it in her cage. I really love that perch. Those kind of perches that hang and then they have the multiple branches coming out of them, they're kind of like both a ladder and a swing at the same time, which is a really neat concept. This cage has plenty of toys and I really especially like this one with the crinkle paper and the finger traps. It's really great for foraging and it's really just great for shredding. A lot of birds like to pick out the crinkle paper and then scatter it everywhere and make a big mess. The size of this cage is great as well. This is one of the cages on my Amazon store. The one thing about this cage that you have to be careful of is that it has these feeder doors that slide up and down. These are called guillotine doors and they can actually provide an escape risk for some birds. For those kinds of doors, I really recommend using a clip like this or a zip tie to secure it shut because birds are smart. They can figure out how to open those doors. If you look up bird escaping cage, you're gonna see a lot of videos of birds slipping right out of those doors. Not all birds are gonna figure it out, but some can, so you just wanna be careful. Overall, the setup is really, really good. We've got lots of different perches. You've got natural wood, you've got platform perches and rope. And there's also stainless steel food bowls, which are ideal because they are the cleanest and plenty of toys. So really, I don't have anything else to say about this setup. So this next cage is for an adorable yellow budgie named Chip. The cage dimensions here are 36 inches tall by 26 inches long by 14 inches deep. And this is definitely one of the better tabletop cages. This cage is a decent size for one budgie and if you're going with a tabletop cage, I think this is a really good option because it is wide. It's a little small in the depth, but it is much wider than most tabletop cages. I really like that kind of natural wooden playground on top. I see most play gyms have dowel perches, so it's really nice to see one with natural wood perches. And I just really Really love play gyms because they give your bird a place to play outside of their cage. Chip is eating Harrison's pellets which is definitely by far my favorite pellet as well as my bird's favorite pellet. It's just a really really great quality food, all organic, really highly recommend. The only perches in this cage are dowel perches, there are four of them, but it does say that you are getting natural wood perches soon which is exactly what I was about to say. You never want to have your bird perching on only dowels, it can cause foot problems so it's really really great that you're getting natural wood perches. Another thing I noticed is that there is a mirror in this cage and birds think of a mirror as another bird and it can cause them to be really hormonal. It can also cause them to be really aggressive towards the mirror because they think it's their mate. And another thing is that they can actually become obsessed with their mirror and stare at the mirror for so long that they don't even wanna leave it. So I really recommend taking that mirror out of the cage, especially if you notice any of those problems, if you notice that your bird is getting hormonal or aggressive. There is a good amount of toys inside this cage, but I would recommend adding some more kind of shredding and foraging type toys. Just because I don't really see any paper toys or toys made out of shreddable materials. There is that twine ball toy in the corner, which a lot of birds really love picking apart, but I would just recommend adding some more toys made out of paper, corn husk like that one, yucca kebabs, maybe some Planet Pleasures toys, some finger traps where you can stuff millet in there, basket toys, you can also stuff millet in the holes. So this next cage is for a lovebird and it says that she only spends time in there to eat and sleep and when you leave the house. Now of course it really really depends on how long you're going to be leaving the house for. If you leave for a 9 to 5 job or if you go to school then your bird is going to be spending many hours inside that cage and in that case I would recommend a larger cage. I really like all these natural wood perches in there. I really like how they're kind of bendy and twisty, so they obviously give your bird some exercise. 
and this one is kind of sloped so your bird can climb. I'm really impressed with this feeding setup here. It's a platform perch with these stainless steel bowls embedded into it so your bird can actually rest their feet while they're eating. It looks like there's five toys in there. My favorite one is definitely the one in the back because it's made out of that woven shreddable material. And I also really like that one hanging right by the rope perch. One of these toys has got this kind of fringy rope with all the strings sticking out of it. And this toy is clearly meant for your bird to chew. You do not want your bird chewing on cotton rope because they can get impacted if they swallow the threads as well as they can actually get caught in that fuzzy material. So I would recommend taking that out of your cage just because you don't want your bird chewing on it. I definitely replace that toy with some kind of foraging toy just because I don't see any foraging toys in your bird's cage. Another thing is that you've got this ball at the bottom of your cage which your love bird likes to throw around and Kermit is exactly like that. It's so adorable when birds throw around balls. There's also a sand perch. It's kind of near the bottom of the cage so it looks like it's in a spot where your bird's not gonna be using it that much. Personally, I would still take it out. I mean, it's not gonna be a huge problem if your bird's not really using it and there's a lot of other perches, but it's just not the most comfortable thing. It's like you walking on sandpaper. If you have to have a perch that trims your bird's nails, use a calcium perch that's not as rough or a perch that is smooth on top and rough on the sides. So this next cage is for a Quaker parrot and I absolutely love Quakers. Now this cage, it looks pretty wide. I don't see the entire cage, it's kind of cut off, but it looks like a pretty decent sized cage. It is a very interesting shaped cage. There are two rope perches and it looks like there's three natural wood from what I see. Again, I don't see the entire cage. And there's also one dowel and it's at the top. Now if you're gonna use that dowel, then I would recommend placing it lower in the cage because at the top is where your bird's gonna be sitting most. Birds really like to spend a lot of time at the top of their cage, and you don't want your bird using a dowel perch the majority of the time. I definitely recommend placing more toys in here. I see three in here, and this cage can definitely fit more, so I'd recommend placing at least maybe six toys in this cage. Violet. <laughs> Violet, come on, you want the millet? Ready, come. <laughs> what are you doing? You just dive bombing pearl. Anyway, two of these toys are kind of like wooden block toys and then one of these is kind of like this disc toy made out of these palm leaves and I definitely recommend placing foraging toys in there and more wood, more shredding toys. You just want a lot of variety for your bird, get different types of toys, see what your bird likes. Also, it is kind of hard to see, but there is this small hanging mirror in the cage, which I would recommend that you take out, especially if you're noticing those behaviors in your bird, like aggression and hormonal behaviors. So this next cage is for a green cheek conure, and this is a really, really nice sized cage. It says here that you carved these dowel perches to give them more texture, which is a really, really great idea to make use of dowel perches. Just take a knife and scrape little ditches into them so it's more textured and you've got varying widths. You're still not gonna be able to get that much variation in a dowel perch, but it's a great option if you have some dowel perches. Again, I see this same perch that kind of hangs from the top and has these multiple perches sticking out, which is a really, really nice perch. I also see that you have this rope perch on the outside of your bird's cage, and more people should do that. My birds love sitting on perches just outside of their cages. Pearl is literally doing it right now. Oh, <laughs> she just came to me. Pearl loves that rope perch on the outside of Kermit's cage. You've got two ladders in your cage. One of them is like a bridge, and then one of them goes from the platform perch to the side of the cage. I really like giving my birds things to climb. I also really like platform perches, of course, because birds need a break. This entire top left corner is kind of empty of any perches and toys, and I definitely recommend putting perches and toys there because you want your bird to use up the entire cage space as well as the fact that birds love hanging out near the top of the cage, it lets them feel more secure. So if you put several perches and toys there, I feel like that's gonna be your bird's favorite spot. You've got some great toys in your cage, especially the one near the bottom. I really love that toy because it has so much variety within one toy. There's so many different materials. There's this palm leaf flower, there's twine balls, there's vine rings, there's crinkle paper, all for your bird to chew just with one toy. You've got this really big wooden block toy and a bird kebab, which is a classic. A lot of birds really love those. You've got stainless steel bowls, you've got a cuddle bone, Overall, this is a really, really nice setup for a green cheek conure. Just add toys and perches in that top left corner and then you'll have a perfect setup. 
All right, so the next cage is for an adorable little budgie named Sunny. And it says that the dowels are scraped so they do have texture. Now that is a great thing to do, but I see that you still only have dowel perches in your cage. And even if you do scrape the dowels, you still don't wanna have only dowels in your cage. It's not enough variety, so I would recommend still getting natural wood perches and maybe just keeping one or two of the dowels. Now this cage is a very tall and narrow cage and a lot of people think that they are upgrading their bird's cages when they get this cage, but in reality it's really not that big because it doesn't have the width so your bird cannot go from side to side and your bird is still stuck basically only using the vertical height and a lot of birds do not go to the bottom of the cage so they don't end up using the entire height. Most of the toys here look like either plastic toys or beads or bells, and I'd really, really recommend adding shredding toys and foraging toys for your budgie because those are the toys that really help parrots express that natural behavior. A lot of these foraging and shredding toys you can make DIY out of popsicle sticks, cupcake holders, you can get your own finger traps. You can just fold up a piece of paper and put a treat inside and that can be a really fun foraging toy. You can use cardboard, paper. Just make sure that you don't only have those plastic toys in there because most birds really don't play with them that much and some birds do on occasion but they're still not getting that much out of it birds are gonna be shredding things for hours that's what's really gonna keep them occupied so this next cage is for a cockatiel and yeah this cage is way too small you definitely want to get a larger cage even if it's just a nighttime cage this cage is just way too small this cockatiel can probably not even spread their wings fully this cage is really narrow it honestly looks like the cockatiel's body length is about the width of the cage but i really really love that grapevine tree stand outside of the cage that looks really fun and grapevine is a really great wood for birds feet in terms of like what's inside this cage, I like how there's no dowels and there's three natural wood perches instead. Um, it looks like there's two toys, but since this cage is so small, I don't really think you'd be able to fit more toys. So if you did get a bigger cage, which I really highly suggest, then I'd recommend that you get lots of toys in there for your bird. I'd also recommend replacing that plastic tube water with a stainless steel bowl because the plastic tube can definitely have more bacteria growth and a stainless steel bowl is just the most sanitary option. Honestly, I just think the most important thing here is getting a cage upgrade for this cockatiel because this cage is really small. So this next cage is really, really amazing. This is a huge cage. So this is for an Alexandrine, a green cheek, and a cockatiel. So there is a divider that separates the green cheek and cockatiel from the Alexandrine, but the green cheek and cockatiel are housed together. Most of the time that does not work out. Green cheeks, they can be very aggressive towards cockatiels and cockatiels cannot really defend themselves but I don't know the individual circumstance. Your birds might get along extraordinarily well. I do wonder what the bar spacing of this cage is just because an Alexandrine is much larger than a green cheek in a cockatiel, so I don't know if the bar spacing is too big for them. I really don't know, but I absolutely love this cage size. It is huge. There's lots of natural wood perches in here, but I do feel like the Alexandrine could use a few more because it looks like the Alexandrine side has less perches and toys, so I would put some more perches and toys in that side. I would just recommend placing more toys in this cage in general just because this cage is huge. There is tons of space for more toys. I would put some more bigger toys in there for the Alexandrine because they have big beaks. They really like to chew, so I'd recommend placing more wooden toys, lots of bigger ones so your bird can destroy them. This next cage is for an English budgie and I rate this setup a 10 out of 10 because this is a perfect cage setup. There's literally nothing to change in here. It has so many toys, natural wood perches, lots of enrichment and it's a really, really nice size. There is a huge variety of toys in this cage. You have wood, you have finger traps, you have a bird kebab, you have shoelaces, you have shreddable rings, you have a seagrass hammock. You have so much variety in here. This bird is living the life. I love how you have so many different types of perches in your cage. You don't just have one style of natural wood perch. You've got manzanita. You've got this kind of wavy perch that looks like grapevine. You even have a natural wood perch going all the way across the cage. You have platform perches. You have a rope perch. There is just so much variety in here. You also have stainless steel bowls and you have a ladder. And you, I mean, there's just nothing missing from this cage. Pearl. Pearl approves. Next cage is 
for two cockatiels. They are so adorable. Whew. This cage is, it's, it's definitely too small. I definitely recommend that you upgrade this cage into a flight cage, especially because you do have two cockatiels. These cockatiels are absolutely adorable, but I mean, this cage is just not suitable for them. So even if you have to keep this cage, I really recommend that you replace those two dowels with natural wood perches because they don't have any other perches in there. And they also have no other toys except for the mirrors. So I'd recommend that you replace those mirrors with shredding toys, foraging toys, wooden toys, different toys that your bird can actually play with, and mirrors are not even good for birds anyway. I mean, even if this is only a sleeping cage, like, they're still only sleeping on dowels, so please get natural wood perches, even if your birds are, even if this is just a sleep cage and your birds spend no time in here, I, I don't know how much time your birds are spending in this cage. Your cockatiels are just so, so adorable and they just deserve a bigger and better home. The next cage is for a Senegal parrot named Buster. So cute! This is a perfect size cage. So much space in there. Lots of width and lots of height. One thing I noticed is that for some reason there's like a lot of food bowls on the bottom of the cage. Like not that it's a problem, but maybe Buster threw them on the bottom of the cage. I would definitely recommend replacing that long wooden dowel with natural wood perches and this cage is so big that there's so much room for different natural wood perches. You can put them on all different levels of the cage so your bird can utilize the entire cage space. It looks like there's a lot of toys hanging from the top so I would definitely spread some of those toys around, hang some from the sides of the cage at different heights. You don't want all of your toys hanging from the top of the cage. This is a really nice size cage, just great cage for a Senegal. So this is going to be the last cage for today. Now this cage is for an adorable Lutino cockatiel named Dawn. I actually follow Dawn's Instagram. Dawn is just adorable, at legit parrot, so cute. This cage is absolutely perfect. I have nothing bad to say about this cage. I really love that you have this grapevine perch in the cage. Grapevine is just one of my favorite perches. And in this corner, you've got this giant seagrass mat full of shredding toys that Dawn has destroyed. This is what we want to see. I love that seagrass mat with all those toys. Just really enriching setup here. All right guys, so that is it for part three of Cage Reactions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video.